Focaccia is great if you're wandering into the world of bread making. This video breaks down my recipe step by step so it's easy to understand and it produces a great loaf of bread. I seriously think focaccia is the gateway to the world of bread baking for a few reasons. One, because traditional focaccia does not use a pre-ferment or a starter. It's just a straight dough. You add your flour, your yeast, water, salt, and olive oil. You mix it all together. Boom, you're done. Two, because focaccia is baked in a pan. So you don't need any extensive knowledge of dough shaping. None of that's required. Three, it's a wetter dough, so it doesn't require as much kneading. In fact, I barely knead my dough at all. Rather, I use a series of folds, which I will discuss later in the video. Four, focaccia is the type of bread where it's perfectly acceptable to top it with whatever you want. In this recipe, I'm gonna use fresh rosemary, some garlic confit, and some coarse sea salt. But when you make this, just top it with whatever you want. Okay, to kick things off, grab a large bowl and to it, add 600 grams or four and a half cups of all-purpose flour and a quarter teaspoon of dry active yeast. Give everything a quick stir to distribute the yeast evenly and make sure to leave a well in the center of the flour. That'll be for the liquids. Now go ahead and set those ingredients aside and grab another bowl. Add 450 grams of warm water. And by warm, I mean shoot for a target temp around 100 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Too hot and you'll kill the yeast, but if the water's too cold, then the yeast won't really activate. Finish this step by adding the sea salt and then give the bowl a quick stir to help it dissolve. Now pour the warm salted water into the bowl with your flour mixture. Then drizzle in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Use your hands to stir the mixture together. If you happen to have a stand mixer, that'll work too. Just strap on that dough hook and off you go. But sometimes it's good to get your hands dirty, so that's the approach today. Okay, at first the dough's gonna feel and look kinda shaggy, but after a minute or so of mixing, it'll come together to form what will seem like a pretty wet dough. See how I'm kind of pinching the dough with my index finger and thumb? This is a great technique to incorporate ingredients without actually kneading or handling the dough too much. Okay, now that we have everything evenly mixed together, it's time to transfer the dough to a lightly greased large mixing bowl. A plastic bench scraper with rounded corners on one side is the perfect tool for this step, so go pick one up. They only cost a couple bucks. The hydration percentage for this dough is about 75%. That's considered fairly wet, so it can be tough to handle if you try to knead it. So in lieu of kneading, I use a series of folds which introduce air into the dough. It also helps to create gluten, which will give the dough great structure. Grab a quarter to a third of the dough from underneath, lift up and stretch it until the dough resists. Fold it over onto itself and press down a bit to secure the dough in place. Do this three or four times until you've completed a full turn. Now cover the bowl with a wet towel and let the dough rest for about 20 minutes. Then repeat the entire folding process three or four more times. The dough's ready when it's smooth and silky and has some resistance when you poke it. Now cover the bowl tightly with some plastic film because we need to let the focaccia dough rest and ferment as a single mass. This will be our first rise and it's easily one of the most important steps in bread making. Once you have the bowl sealed, put it aside until the dough has doubled in size. I'm doing an overnight bulk fermentation in my refrigerator. Now remember, we're not using a starter or a pre-ferment here, so that additional fermentation time is gonna help develop more flavor in the dough. Gluten will continue to form overnight as well, so that combined with the folding technique, that should give us enough structure in the dough to support it for the second rise. I usually make focaccia dough at night, right after dinner. Then I pull it from the fridge the following morning. This is what the dough should look like. It should have risen overnight, but the dough is still strong enough that it'll resist if you give it a few pokes. Prepare a baking pan by greasing it with a tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil. A nine by 13 inch pan is the perfect size for this recipe. It's actually the same exact pan that I use for my Detroit style pan pizza. So if you're curious about that recipe, I'll leave a link in the upper right hand side of this video. Okay, if you have a dough scraper, grab it, because you gotta transfer that focaccia dough from the bowl to the pan you just lathered in olive oil. Gently press the dough and stretch it into each corner of the rectangular pan. If the dough's too tacky and it's sticking to your hands, just wet your fingers a bit. That should solve the problem. And occasionally, I find that the dough can be stubborn and it just doesn't wanna make it to each corner, so don't force it. Spread the dough out as much as you can without fighting it, 
Then cover the pan and try again in 10 minutes or so. Next, cover the pan with a damp towel or some plastic film, whatever you prefer, and leave it to rise a second time. Ideally, the ambient temp should be somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And it turns out that an oven with the light left on is the perfect environment for proofing bread dough. This second proof is important for a few reasons. One, because it gives the yeast a second chance to produce more gas, which will improve the crumb in the focaccia. And two, it allows the gluten to stretch out a little bit more, which will trap those gases and keep the dough from collapsing as it rises. Pull the dough after it's been proofing for about an hour. It should have risen, but not quite doubled in height. Then fill a bowl with some water and have it at the ready. Then dip your fingers and begin dimpling the focaccia dough. Press straight down to the bottom of the pan, don't be shy with this, and work from one end of the pan to the other. You can actually deflate the focaccia dough if you're not careful here, so keep dipping your fingers back into the water so that the dough doesn't stick to them. Take that damp towel and cover the dough again. Then stick the pan back into the oven and continue proofing the focaccia dough for another 45 minutes to an hour. Check it again, and at this point, the dough should have risen enough so that it fills about half to two thirds of the pan. There should also be bubbles that are visible on the surface of the dough, and if you shake the pan, it should jiggle a bit. We're almost ready to bake, but first, let's top the focaccia with a few delicious things. I've picked some fresh rosemary leaves from their stems, and I'm just gonna sprinkle them all around the surface of the dough from edge to edge. I'm also gonna add some garlic confit. Now, this sounds fancy, but it's really not. All I did was submerge garlic cloves in olive oil, and I cooked them over very, very low heat for about 30 minutes until they're tender, and that is it. I added about 20 or so cloves here, and I gently pressed them into the surface of the dough. Don't forget to add a hefty drizzle of that garlic-infused oil as well. Oh, and I almost forgot, I always finish off each focaccia with a few fat pinches of coarse sea salt. Now, bake your focaccia on the middle rack of a preheated 450 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. And when the internal temp hits 190 degrees, you should have a bread that looks something like this. Carefully pop the bread out of the pan and onto a wire rack. It'll be hard to resist, but you're gonna wanna let it cool off for just a few minutes. While it's still warm though, I like to drizzle some good extra virgin olive oil all over the top of the focaccia. I mean, the bread's gonna soak it up, but mm, it just makes it taste that much better. All right, I'm gonna cut the bread in half and take a look at the interior. Now, focaccia should have a moist and airy crumb to it, and the inside should be kind of springy. There should be plenty of air holes throughout the bread, and mine are typically smallish to medium in size, and that's fine. I mean, no one's ever filed a complaint with me. The bottom, top, and sides should be golden brown and a little crispy straight out of the oven. Now, I've been staring at this focaccia for about an hour, so it's time for a slice. Another splash of olive oil and a final pinch of salt, and I am ready to dig in. I hope I did a good job of explaining the focaccia making process to you. If so, hit me with a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me in the comments below. I will get back to you ASAP. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.